Welcome to the Mortgage Wise Radio Show and Video Podcast, where we educate and provide expert advice on personal finance, mortgages, and real estate investing. Show me the money. As a result of what we do, our team has helped hundreds of first time buyers, experienced buyers, and real estate investors achieve their goals of home ownership. I wonder if there's a connection there. Here are your executive producers and mortgage advisors, Randy and Veronica Chambliss. podcast and radio show that's designed to provide expert advice on mortgages, personal finances, and real estate investing. Um, I'm Randy Chambers. I'm the executive director of Louisiana Housing Authority, and I have to my right. I'm Veronica Chambers. I am the director of housing with Louisiana Housing Authority. I'm also a co-branch manager with Geneva Financial. Awesome, awesome. All right, so today, guys, we're going to talk about the 10 steps to home ownership. So in this episode, that's what we're going to talk about. We're also going to step you through the process step by step to make it plain and simple because Mm -hmm. buying a home shouldn't be difficult or frustrating, right? So we'll share some of our past and current experiences so you can be excited and confident in the home buying process. So the number one thing, um, well, step one when purchasing a home, you have to have a burning desire to buy a home, right? Yes, absolutely. And what we mean by that burning desire, that burning desire have to be a thought, right? A desire that's in your in your mind, right? That's ongoing consistently. It's just there. When you wake up in the morning, you're thinking about buying a home. Throughout the day when you're at work or you're taking care of your business, you're thinking about buying a home. Mm-hmm. When you are laying down and you're getting ready to doze off to sleep or you're taking a bath, you are thinking about buying a home. And what you're doing is imagining yourself, okay, I'm in this vision of what it would look like for me to have a home for my little children, right? So that's what we mean by having that burning desire. And that's super, super important through our experiences because at the end of the day, you want to be able to put yourself in a position that you can go and grow through those challenges, right? Because buying a home is not easy, but it's simple, right? When you have the right expert that could guide you and you have the actual practical plan to follow. So that's number one, guys, is have that burning desire. You got to eat, sleep, think about it all the time because at that turn back moment, Steve Harvey made a statement um, a while back. He said, listen, there's one guarantee in life, right? If you want to be successful, that's one guarantee. And that is at that moment of turn back, when everything hit the fan and you get ready to quit, that turn back moment, if you turn back and quit, then the guarantee is you will never be successful or you will never hit your goal, your wishes and your desire. But in this topic, we're talking about home ownership, right? So at that turn back moment, when a lender might be asking you for some documents and you're like, I can't find it, I don't know what I did with it, I already sent that. Right, I already (laughs) sent it. Don't get upset. Don't get frustrated. You don't want to be in those emotional states, right? You want to be in a good emotional emotional state. So you want to be able to have that burning desire, guys. So when that time of challenges come, you can take care of it and go grow through it with ease. Mm -hmm. Uh, Les Brown, another mentor of mine, made a statement a long time ago. He said, unless until you handle it with grace, it will stay in your face, right? So think about that. It's going to stay in your face unless you handle it with grace. So that's number one. What's the, what's the, well, and I just want to add something. So back to what you said, like you want to be thinking about it, thinking about it. Why? Because it creates a vision and we know without a vision, the people what perish. Perish. So we have to have that vision. So like Randy say, when you go through it and then you feel, you get to the moment when you feel frustrated and you want to give up, guess what? You go to thinking back to your vision and then that should get you back into a good, attitude you know absolutely because that's what the vision does it gives you hope and hope gives you power today it gives you that extra effort to grow grow through but again the guarantee is if you quit you will never buy your house but i'm telling you um it's nothing like when you get to that closing table and those keys are handed over to you that's no feeling could describe that guys when you actually have those keys in your hand and you know you are a homeowner that is a powerful thing, guys. Mm-hmm. And so 
Anything else you want to add to that, Veronica, before mm -hmm. we go to the second one? No, nope, we can go to step two. So step two is where the money reside, where the money reside. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> personal financial plan, right? Absolutely. So we have to have a personal financial plan. I know there's a lot of things floating around the internet and on TV about the economy, the U.S. economy, China economy. But you have to be worrying about, you need to be worrying about your economy, right? My economy. That's what you need to be focusing on, your economy, right? Focus on you first, right? Focus on minimizing your taxes, right? You want to focus on that. That way you have more money to pay down some debt if you have to. Or you have more money left over that you can start to put towards your saving uh, purchase in your home, right? So that personal financial plan is a plan that you put in place that will guarantee home ownership if you follow the plan. Mm -hmm. It's that old saying, plan your work and what? Work your plan. Say it again, plan your work. And work your plan. That's it, guys. You got to have the plan. So you want to minimize your taxes, you want to minimize your debts or pay off your debt, minimize your living expenses, right? You want to raise your credit score up as much as possible. Yes, minimum was about 620 for FHA, uh, 640 conventional, uh, but you want it higher than that. You want to get it as high as you possibly can, right? And then you want to increase your savings, right? You want to be saving your cash, right? It's income tax time. Some people are getting tax returns, right? Mm -hmm. Tax returns are coming. You have some folks that's getting $7,000 checks, but they buy a car, a vehicle every year with that check. Well, this year, skip the vehicle and buy your house before the car, right? And so now you can use that money to be able to put down on your down payment because correct me if I'm wrong, Veronica, we don't need buyers don't need 20% to put down or 30% to put down on a home, right? Nope. I had that conversation today. So the minimum down payment, 3% in some cases, 3.5%. Yeah. So you don't always need 20%. That's right. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, it's 0%, right? Okay. <laughs> you got VA loans that's out there. You got USDA. Right. So you got the whole Jefferson Parish that's 100% uh, financing. So Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So there's many different... Um, you know, reason why you want to have your personal finances in order. You know, at the end of the day, when you talk to your banker, right, uh, it, it doesn't matter what your GPA was in school, doesn't matter how many degrees you have. Um, you have some people have more degrees than a thermometer coming off their business card, right? But my point is, when you go to that bank, that bank is not asking for your report card, GPA, or your the certificate, or your diploma. They're not asking what they're asking for is your finances. They wanna know what is your balance sheet and what is your income statement, right? So you have to know what those are. That, that income statement is your income and your expenses, right? It's telling that lender how much income you have coming in your household month after month, right? That's verified, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then it also tells us through the credit report of not only the scores, you know, we not as, as lenders, we're not looking at your credit report just to see your scores. Like we're looking at your credit report to see what expenses that you have coming out of that every single month, right? Now, we're not talking about expenses like your cable bill or your mobile phone bill. We're not calculating those debts, right, right? Right. But we are looking for car payments, auto loans, personal loans, credit other cards. mortgages, mm -hmm. credit cards. Right. So we are looking for those payments, and that's going to determine ultimately how much home that you can afford. Or for you and your family, right? So basically, your credit your credit report is your report card, yeah, right? Absolutely. So basically, we look at your credit report to determine your character, to see what type of person is this? Is this person responsible? Do they pay their bills on time? Now, we know, mm -hmm. you know, life happens to all of us. Life happens. So it is situations where we can explain some of those derogatory accounts, right? Yep, Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And don't take it up on yourself, guys, just to go and start paying off accounts. And oh, you, you're talking too, too fast. I, I, you're right. you know <laughs> that leads I us into, into that, that into leads that us into step three. <laughs> so I was I was about to say so. Step two is personal financial planning, but also is leading us to step three, the initial consultation. So don't just start. Hey, let me get this credit report. Let me start paying these people right. off. So I had I actually had a guy uh, last week. He said, well. I have a uh, cox on there. I want to pay them off. I said, now you come to me for a loan and now you want to pay these people <laughs> off? 
Let that, me look at your credit been, report that, first. That been out there for six years. He ain't paid off yet. I said, let me look at your credit report first. So the initial consultation sometimes does, or most of the time does include that for somebody that's probably not ready at the moment to purchase. I just gave a young lady yesterday a whole plan, a game plan going forward. And one of them was, hey, increase your savings and see if you can get your second job back. So we can add that income because she had been there over two years and is in the hospitality industry. And I know a lot of those hotels are starting to um, hire, rehire now due to COVID because, again, we have the vaccine out. A lot of people are starting starting to gain confidence with uh, traveling and everything. So I said, reach out to them. Don't wait until they call you. <laughs> reach out to them. So she said, OK. I said, and also refinance your car because your, your interest rate is too high. Let's lower that payment. You know, absolutely. And it goes back to having that initial consultation. We provide a free consultation. We don't charge for it. We don't charge for the credit report up front. We don't charge um, uh, anything up front. It's just a consultation. And it's a, it's a conversation, right? I mean, I'm going to dump the word consultation. It's a conversation. And that conversation goes something like this most of the time. You know, hey, Mr. or Mrs. Barr, if you don't mind, I'll ask you a few questions just to know how can I serve you best. Is that fair? Usually people will say what? Yes, yeah. of course, please. <laughs> One of the questions is, hey, what's your credit score? Have you pulled it recently, right? How much income gross do you earn monthly, right? Um, how much do you have saved up? Right. Do not, you have any student loans? Right. Do now, you have any and, open collection? And not your not your bill money that you pay out your bills every month. We ain't talking about that saving. We talking about actual what? Money on the side to go towards the purchase right. of your home, exactly. not your bills. <laughs> exactly. I, I say that jokingly because I had a couple of people I had to make sure I, I used the correct language, right? I had a couple of people like, oh, yeah, man, I have, you know, $12,000 saved. Okay, great. Right. But I didn't realize 6000 of that was his actual bill money that he spent every month. Right. Right? So right. We, we just want to make sure that we have clear communication. That way, everybody is confident and comfortable that we can move forward. So mm -hmm. absolutely, that, that consultation. It gives an opportunity for us or your lender to ask you questions. Um, you provide the answer. And based on those answers, it determines if you're ready to move forward with a full loan application or you need to have a game plan like Veronica mentioned. They're going to give you that lender. We're going to give you that personal financial game plan. And all you have to do is just follow the plan. Mm -hmm. And so once the plan is done, you pick up the phone, you call us. We're going to ask those questions once again. And if everything is ready, then we move forward with that loan application, guys. So that brings us to the next step. What so is that? after that conversation, then mm -hmm. it brings us to step four, a pre-approval. Awesome. So what is a pre-approval, right? Well, it's a big difference between a pre-qual and a pre-approval, right? Pre-qualification and a pre-approval. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So right now we in this unique situation, we more in this seller market, meaning that you don't have a whole lot of inventory uh, that's on the market, right? Meaning that home, right? You may have one home that comes on the market, beautiful home, but you, by the weekend, it, it get listed by a real, a realtor, you know, maybe Friday, by Saturday, they have maybe five people sh showing the house, six people viewing the house. And so if you have a pre-qualification letter, all that's basically stating is that you had a conversation with your lender and based on the answers that you gave your lender conversational wise, then they say, okay, you, you pre-qualify, you know, here's a letter. But when you're pre-approved, you actually turned in documents to verify that conversation that you had. So mm -hmm. just like those questions we talked about, well, hey, what's your credit score? How much money do you have saved up so far for your down payment? You know, how much do you earn grossly monthly, right? Gross monthly. So now we're going to collect paycheck stuff. We want to see bank statements and that prove exactly how much income you're earning monthly gross and also how much you have in your savings account. And then at that point, now we could do the calculations and give you a pre-approval letter. So now when that realtor, who's that seller's agent, right? Or the seller get to see that pre-approval letter and they see a pre-qualification letter next to it, most likely they're gonna go with that pre-approval letter because they know this person not only talked to a lender, number one, but actually submitted documents and so if you imagine for a moment in their position as the seller, they want to make sure what? That you can close, right? That's the whole mm -hmm. purpose why they sell it because they want to right. know who's the best candidate that submitted offers 
that can close, right? And that's why you want to have that consultation. You want to reach out to your lender so that way that that lender or those lenders can get you qualified, right? So anything else you want to add to that? No. All right. Need it. So the next step is find a home. So you have your pre-approval letter. Now the next step is to do what? Find a home. Right. So now you're going out. You might be looking online. You may have a realtor that you're working with. Him or her are showing you properties. And lo and behold, you find a home of your burning desire, right? Because it goes back to number one. You have to have a burning desire. You have to know how many bedrooms you want, how many bathrooms you want, how big the square feet of the home that you want. You have to kind of visualize like what the outside of your property, your home is going to look like, what your bathrooms is going to look like. So now once you actually see that home and find it, now you can be confident and comfortable knowing that you can submit a strong offer because you have a pre-approval letter, right? You down that path of home, you're going down that path of home ownership. And what's the next one? So the next one, once you find a home and you put a home under contract, it's step six. You want to get a home inspection and you want to get the appraisal. So the home inspection for as far as the bank, the bank does not require one, but it is recommended and especially by your realtor and your realtor mm -hmm. help you do that process. They, they give you referrals or they may have some people that they call and they come out and inspect the home just to make sure you're not buying a home that's falling apart. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, you have an inspector that literally going to go on that roof. Uh, they're going to go into the attic. They're going to comb through um, the crawl space underneath your home. If they could get a need, they're going to take a fine tooth comb if they're good and they're going to be looking for problems. That's the whole point. Mm -hmm. They're looking for they're challenges. Looking for problems. They're going to find something. Absolutely. It could be a new construction home. They Their job is to find something. Absolutely. <laughs> and it's not that you need to have everything they find fixed in 100% perfect condition. That's not the point. Right. The point is you just need to know about it. You just need to know about it so you can make a decision and say, hey, am I comfortable of moving forward with this, right? Inside the inspection, you may have a plumber that come out and actually run a video camera down the sewer lines to check to see if there's any breakage, right? Because that one mistake, you have a breakage in the sewer line and it's a slab home, right? And it's meaning that it's not raised off the ground. To dig underneath the house might be a good ticket of six. Thousand, five thousand, seven thousand mm -hmm. dollars easy, mm -hmm. and that's your baby. Once you get those keys in your hand, you inherited the problem. Yep. You inherit <laughs> the problem, so you want to have your home inspection. You want to have a good inspector, and you're gonna look at that report, and you're gonna be able to determine what do you want the seller to possibly fix. Because the seller, you can make the request known. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that they have to accept it, right? But you can mm -hmm. make your request known, and. The seller have an opportunity to review your request that you want fixed and rebuttal and respond as well in a timely, uh, organized fashion. And then you guys just basically negotiate, right, between mm -hmm. you and the seller. Um, and whatever you guys determine that's that's good for you, you know, that you're comfortable with, and then you can move forward. Mm -hmm. um, if it doesn't work out, that you're not comfortable, the seller's not willing to budge on some of your requests, then you can walk away from that property with no recourse, right? Because the only thing you really put up with just a, a um, earnest money uh, deposit for that property, I mean, usually typically is about a thousand dollars, right? Mm -hmm. But you have a 10 day, right? A 10 day window of having your inspections done and responding when you first have a signed executed contract between you and that seller. So I'm gonna repeat mm -hmm. that. When you finally, you finally found that house, right? And if you're working with a realtor partner, him or her is going to write out those documents, that purchase and sales agreement. You're going to sign, the seller's going to sign, and you execute it. But it's not fully in effect until you have a deposit down, right? That gives you consideration, right? And you have a 10-day window unless it's a 14-day window, right? That's a negotiation too. Mm -hmm. Some some people write 10 days in special. Seven days. Right. Mm -hmm. Some people do 20 days. You know? <laughs> 30 days. But the point is, you, whatever inspection period that you, you write in that contract, y'all agree upon, you have 10 days to do all your inspections from your plumber to your termite guys mm -hmm. or your termite lady, get your termite inspections, and you get your home inspection. So that's really mm -hmm. three inspections, right? Yeah. Well, also, you, you also have to drive around the area at nighttime. 
in the I daytime. That's an inspection too. How many times we didn't checking out the, the schools in the area? That's an inspection too. The so neighborhood. stuff like that, the neighborhood, everything. So you wanna you wanna really dig. Do in. the freaks come out at night? You wanna know that. <laughs> On the daytime. The On the day. daytime and, and, and these, these day and age, right? You have to know that. And another thing, so the bank audit appraisal. So that is a cost to you out of pocket, but you get that back at closing and it goes towards, it reduces the amount that you have to bring to closing, right? So a lot of people are like, well, how do I know if I'm not overpaying for this house? Well, that's what the appraisal is for. So the appraiser, they go out, the appraiser go out and they determine and they tell the bank, hey, it is possible that the house is worth, in my opinion, because it is an opinion, mm -hmm. in my opinion, based on the market, this house can, is valued at this price. So, and sometimes what, I mean, in the last two months, I, I've had a couple of loans that came back, the appraisal uh, came back low. Mm -hmm. And so both agents rebuttaled the appraisal. They actually say, hey, I don't agree with that. So that is something that, you know, the listing agent usually does. A absolutely. Mm -hmm. And how they rebuttal is through facts, not just emotions and words, exactly. right? Exactly. Through facts, they, they will employ comparables that's the same square feet or similar square feet, the same similar bedroom and bathroom count, et cetera. And sure. they say, okay, in the last... 30 days, this home sold two doors down. You haven't used, you did not use this comp, Mr. or Mrs. Appraisal. So that's what Veronica mean by having that rebuttal, right? But it's going to be based on facts. Homes that sold already that's similar to yours, right? And so that's kind of group, regroup a little bit, right? So that's really two approvals here. First, the borrower is getting approved based on what? Their personal finances. How well did they took care or taking care of their personal finances, right? That's their report card, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the second approval is the house. The home itself has to be approved. And that's the purpose of the appraisal. The appraiser, him or her that goes out there to review that property is kind of like the eyes of the lender because the lender like us, we don't go see the house, right. right? So we don't know what the house looked like other than Googling it on, online, but that appraiser is going to go out there. They're going to turn stoves on to see if the gas is on. They're going to turn lights on to see if the lights is on. And if it's a FHA loan, there's certain guidelines that must, and I repeat, that must um, be satisfied before you can close on the house. For example, the lights have to be on. The fence have to be in good working condition. It can't be leaning over, different things like that. And so my point is the home has to be pre-approved already, right? Have to be approved. So it's mm -hmm. two items that's being approved. Yeah. So that leads us to the next step. So the next step is step uh, seven, processing. So while all of that is going on, the lender is actually processing your file, right? Absolutely. And so that lender, that processing team, it, this is a whole nother department, a whole nother team mm -hmm. member, right? Couple of, couple of team members. And what they're doing, they're calling um, your job or the online, you know, emailing your HR director. They want to confirm that you mm -hmm. are still, in fact, working. Mm -hmm. And how long have you been working there, right? Mm -hmm. They are reaching out to the title settlement company, that attorney or that notary that does your title abstract, as, uh, abstract to make sure that one, you actually have the right to sell a house, right? Mm -hmm. You know, what if you buy a home and the, the person that you gave all the money to not even the homeowner, right? Well, you protect it through that when you use a, a certified licensed title company, right? And so now that process of reaching out to the title company, make sure that, you know, if it's a, a succession in place that all the heirs are, are, are together, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot of things going on things. in the background. That's right. And so like, I like to tell people is levels to this. Yes. So when you come and we take a loan application, we get all your documents, we preparing the file, we setting up everything, we uploaded all the documents. Details. details, details. I mean, just like the doctor, the doctor, when you go to the doctor, the doctor take all your symptoms in and they leave out, uh, you know, they say, well, we're going to call you in a couple of days when everything come back. The same with a lender, depending on how, um, 
in depth your file is actually like how much you have going on I, I mean I helped somebody that had 10 rental properties before well I had to go through and list all of those properties all of the details about that property like the insurance the property taxes mm -hmm. homeowners association fees and it's details so right. once the the loan officer finished originating the loan then they have to submit it after they disclose then we have to submit it to our processing team that's a whole nother department, like Randy said. Yep. So once the process of pick up that file, then they have to go through everything, verify that we put everything in correct. Verify it, everything. Everything. So, <laughs> and their job is to make sure that we submitted a, a clean file to them, meaning we had everything that the underwriter needs to stamp a, a credit approval on that file. And like Randy said, they're reaching out to the third party vendors, verifying information, ordering the title. So that's what's going on. That's probably going on day two or three mm -hmm. of the loan process. Right. And that's why it takes so long to close a loan. 30 days, some in some cases, 45 days, because a lot of people hands are on this. So once the process of get it, you want to add something before we go yeah, to the next that, step? Yeah, I do. So okay. once that process of get it, you know, that processor, they have a checklist, right? And they just going down, down this checklist. Okay, that's done. Okay, that's done. That's done. That's done. Because we all know all we should know, right? What's the guidelines of getting this person approved? The same guidelines that we know up front, what it takes to get this person approved is the same guidelines the underwriter is gonna, gonna follow. The underwriter is not doing anything different. We just know the guidelines. So we just packing up, packaging up this file to make a nice tight file and we're gonna give that to the underwriter, right? Well, we give it to our processor. Our mm -hmm. processor comb through it as a second eye on the file. Mm -hmm. And then once everything is done, the checklist is, the check box boxes all done, then it's given to the underwriter. For, Which is step eight. Right. Mm -hmm. Which it, it goes, goes to the underwriter. There you go. That's right. Now step eight is the underwriter themselves, they're going to again, follow the guidelines and they're gonna go into that file and they're gonna look for income. They're going to look for expenses going up. They're going to check credit scores. They're going to be looking at details, right? To the bone, because their license is on, is on the line. line That's right. right. <laughs> That's how they eat. That's how they live. So if they make a mistake, it's, it's harsh for an underwriter. So they, they're very, very detailed. They want to make sure mm -hmm. that they're doing the right thing. Now, and you know, what, what happens is, too, I'm sorry to cut you off, no, right. but Every file that an underwriter approved or a loan officer submit is recorded. It's recorded under our name. This is the file that this person did. For life. For life. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody is cautious while, while doing this, right? That's right. <laughs> and so that's why we want to have clear communication, accurate information, because we want to make sure once we're closed, there's no um, th nothing coming back after the closing, right? And so, you know, going back to that, that underwriter, right? The underwriter um, has two approvals, right? We like to call an in industry a one-touch file. Sometimes it might be a two-touch file. That one-touch file is basically that it might be a, a simple person that have simple documents. You know, one job, they have their cash saved up, the credit score is high, and just one, two, three, done, they approve. Some cases, somebody might be self-employed and have a job. Well, it's a little bit more complex. So now when the underwriter get it, they may not be able to do a clear to close on that first touch, but they're going to give a list of documents like Veronica mentioned, a conditional approval, meaning that you approve based on if you can meet these conditions, meaning that, hey, you said you had an IRA account with $20,000 in it. Let us see that IRA account because you're showing $0 in your bank account, right? So things, mm -hmm. things like that. So that moves us to the next step. Which is step number nine, pre-closing. Pre-closing. So pre-closing is... It says pre because that word is before the closing, right? Mm -hmm. Now documents are getting prepared, right? So now when the underwriter signs off, sign their name on that file and give a clear to close, that doesn't mean you closing that day. That doesn't mean you closing an hour before that clear to close came. What that means is that you're clear. Everything, all your documents, everything that the doctor ordered is clear, mm -hmm. is in the file, is done, finished, over with. So now that processor takes that file and goes to the closing department and say, hey, listen, we have a clear to close. Hey, listen, I hope you're all ready. Let's get this thing funded. So now the, the closing team get these documents. They verify the numbers, what the loan amount is going to be, and they start to start to prepare it. They prepare the promissory notes. They prepare to actually mortgage or deed and trust. Like they prepare all these different things, right? 
And so now they're creating this package, right? And they're gonna be going back and forth with that title settlement company. Remember how important that title settlement company is, right? That's the company that's gonna um, take care of the transaction of the closing, right? Mm -hmm. It's gonna be the mediator between you and the seller, right? So now they're gonna be, our closing team is gonna go back and forth with that title company and make sure they're balancing the numbers, meaning all the fees, everything is balanced. It's a win on a title company and it's a win on a lender end. And once it's balanced, at that point, boom, we got everything scheduled, the time, the data schedule, and all you have to do is just show up with a smile and be excited because you're getting ready to get your keys. So step 10, closing. Right. <laughs> step 10 is that closing. Now, what that looks like? Well, at that closing, just be prepared to have some arm power, <laughs> some wrist power. What I mean by that, because Sorry. that mortgage package is right, going to be... <laughs> like a book, like, like a college dictionary, right? a, a book. And so you're going to be flipping through paper, flipping through the sign, oh, hey, in, sign I, I, I say this, the package is this thick just to say, hey, if you don't pay, you don't stay. Yeah, that, that's basically that's what all it is. That's <laughs> but they make sure they record that. I, I, trust me. Trust me. And so um, just know, be prepared. There's going to be a lot of signatures. There's going to be a lot of initials. There's going to be a lot of things going on. But Again, it's worth it, guys. You you a homeowner, you at that table. And now basically what that closing is, just to kind of wrap up that part, is that you finalizing the agreement between you and the seller, the sales price. You finalizing that agreement. You're also finalizing the agreement between you and the lender. How much of the loan that you're going to receive, the promise that to pay them back, you're finalizing and executing that. That's basically what you're doing at the closing. Mm -hmm. And once those do two things are finalized, then you get those keys in hand. Yeah, you because and at that point, that's when what the title is changed into yep. from my name to your name. That's right. <laughs> Showing ownership. You are ownership. the new owner of that property that day. That's right. That's right. So listen, guys, that brings us to all 10. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you got some value. Our goal here is to bring value, to be able to educate. You know, that's what we love to do, right? Um, this is a quick story with myself. You know, I grew up in the city of New Orleans and um, I became a teenage uh, father uh, that was struggling very early on at 19 years old. And in 2005, during Hurricane Katrina, I lost everything I owned in, in that water, right? Water to the roof of the home, couldn't even save photos. And at the end of that, at the end of the day, at that time in my life, at 25 years old, I was broke, busted, and broken. I hit rock bottom. Even though I was had a good job, I was making good money, but I was spending good money. Why? Because I didn't have a personal financial plan in place. I had less than $500 in the bank account. My credit score was horrible. It was in the low 500s. I didn't know what to do. I had a, uh, an older brother of mine, a brother of mine that purchased a home a year prior. He gave me some guidelines. I found a, another mentor that taught me the rules of money, helped me with, put my finances together. And within one year, guys, in 2006, in December, within one year, I bought my first home and I was 26 years old. And 30 days later, I bought my first real estate investment property, which was a duplex. And everybody want to know, how did you do it? And so I found myself providing resources and sharing things and sending people off to get their credit reports. And I was, you know, helping them with the credit, all these different things. And I found the passion, guys, literally I found the passion. And then I realized, wait a minute, if I'm doing all this work, what if, what it would look like if I could actually help them actually get the loan? And so I became a licensed a mortgage loan originator back in 2008. My wife and I, fast forward, we met and we started flipping properties aggressively in 2016, one property after another. We started building new construction homes in 2017, 2018. To this day, we still fix and we flip property. We still hold for cash flow. So again, Veronica, she's the housing director of Louisiana Housing Authority. I'm the executive director of Louisiana Housing Authority. We're both corporate branch managers with Geneva Financial. So we say that not to impress you, but just to impress upon you that we have the education that you need to be able to get you to the next step. So my direct number, guys, I'm write this down. My direct number is 504-270-2783. You can feel free to text me, uh, call me, send me an email. Um, you can find me on Facebook at Mr. Randy Chambliss and also on Instagram at Mr. Randy Chambliss. And my direct number is 
4388. I'm on social media as Veronica Chambliss. And also my website is V Knows Mortgages and that's V-E-E Knows Mortgages.com. Awesome. Awesome. Well, listen, guys, God bless and enjoy the rest of your night on purpose. Take care. That brings today's show to a close. Oh, come on. Thank you for listening to the Mortgage Wise Radio Show and Video Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, feel free to share it with a friend and subscribe. Please follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook at the Mortgage Wise Radio Show. If you want to learn more about what we talked about today, give us a call at 504-270-2783. Or to view our podcast library, please visit our website, themortgagewiseradioshow.com. Autobots, roll out. Until next time, choose to have a great day on purchase, Mortgage Wise friends. Go home.